everybody. Welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to talk about this Saturday's HBO uh, Championship Boxing broadcast on which in the main event we have Vasil Lomachenko defending his WBO 130 pound title against Jason Sosa. Right, it's actually a unification because doesn't Sosa have the WBA, correct? Also on that card we have two Prospects on the come up. We got uh, Alexander Usyk versus Michael Hunter. Doesn't Usyk has a belt? Have a belt? I don't think so. He might have a minor one. Oh, okay. But um, I'll check just to make sure and put it down there. He's fighting Michael Hunter, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, Gavazdik. What's his first name? Alexander. <laughs> Alexander. Okay. I was. I, that's what I thought, and I was like, no, they can't have the same last name. I mean, first name. But yes, Gavazi is fighting Uneski Gonzalez, which should be probably the fight of the night Very as far as competitiveness and closeness and skill. Um, we're at, we're gonna actually start with that fight and then go up to Usyk Hunter and then Lomachenko Sosa. So take it away, Rob. All right, so we got Gavazdik, who is on the major come up. He is a hot commodity. If you had noticed, all three of these guys uh, that are part of the main event are all from the Ukraine. And I've watched the Olympics. I've watched the Ukrainian fighters, which include Lomachenko, Usyk, Gavazdik, um, Shabransky, the Klitschkos. They are all very talented fighters, especially coming out of that Eastern Bloc. They're probably the, have the most talented fighters coming out of that that area, as far as the whole, as as a whole. Um, so, moving on from there, um, he's a very high commodity. I've seen him. He can box. I like what I see. I think he's a better prospect coming out that well, not prospect. I would say contender because they're fast tracking a lot of these guys. I believe he's only like what twelve and zero or thirteen and zero, and then Usyk is twelve and zero. And, of course, Lomachenko is 7-1. So, uh, they have tons of amateur experience. But I also think he's going to be up against it in a guy, this Cuban, Uneski Gonzalez, who we've seen against... Um, John Pascal. John Pascal. And Shabransky. And Shabransky. And they were both split decisions uh, that had not go his way. This is his third time charm, high-level fight, on television. And what he does, he swings for the fences. And he's hard as hell. Yeah. And he also has a very good gas tank because he is still going in the 10th round the same way he's going in the first round. So this is a good test to see where Gavazdik is as opposed uh, in relationship to the world championship level. After this, he'll probably get another contender. Um, or an eliminator. A, yeah, a, that's the word I'm going for. He's going for an eliminator to see where he can line up against the top dogs, which right now the bell holders are Andre Ward and Adonis Stevenson. But you also have the Kovalev fight, uh, Ward. You have the hot commodity right now, Joe Smith Jr. Uh, Art Biev is knocking on the door. You still have Southern Barrera. Yeah, so those guys are gonna fight. I'm, like As far as the belts, you got Ward and Stevenson. Right. And that may change on June 17th, and it may not change. So, as of right now, we've got Ward, Stevenson as the top dogs of the division because they got all the belts. That's right. Um, so, we'll see what happens. I think he's got enough pedigree to pull it off. I think it will be another close fight similar to the Pascal and the Shabransky fight. But... He's a little bit more technically polished, and that should carry him to the victory. And he got his last victory was against um, Asik Chalimba. Asik Chalimba on the undercard to Kolev Ward one. Yes, and that he scored a stoppage in that, and that was the first time that Chalimba had been stopped in a fight that he dominated in the entirety of it. So this is a good, I would say, like a even level fight at that at where he is so after this one he should step it up to like we said the the Barreras or um, the other guys you mentioned they probably won't fight BDBF or uh, Shabransky true but they'll find somebody for him 
because the light heavyweight division does have a lot of fighters. That's right. So moving up to cruiserweight, we've got Alexander Usyk and Michael Hunter. And like Rob said, we've got another very talented Ukrainian fighter who has recently switched trainers and take it away. Yeah, he was with uh, James Ali Bashir uh, for the last, what, four or five, maybe six fights. I can't remember, but I know he had been in the camp in, uh, I was in Detroit. In my yeah, 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 at Crump. At, at the Crump gym. And uh, they had been talking about him for actually of um, maybe a year or so. Bashir was very high on him. Um, and after his last win versus Mishuna. Yes, to be you Mishuna. Um, he decided that he wanted to change trainers, go back to his amateur trainer, which was Vasil Lomachenko's father, which isn't a bad choice. I just want to see what difference Lomachenko's father would provide for Usyk that Bashir couldn't. And I know one is definitely a language barrier there, so it could just be a language thing. Who knows? Yeah. Or it could just want to train at home. You know, I don't knock stuff like that. It happens. Yeah. Familiarity, all kinds of things. Um, it's his prerogative. And we'll see how it translates into the ring. Now, Hunter, we have another undefeated fighter. He's 12 and 0 with 10 knockouts, correct? Mm -hmm. So he has a, a glossy record, but we don't know because I haven't seen much of him. How much skill is going to translate into this fight? Um, I don't think he has the amateur experience that Usyk had. Right. Even though this is the pros and it's a totally different game. As you can see with fighters like Lomachenko, like uh, Rigondeaux, like Golovkin. It does help a lot. So that may be the edge that Usyk has in taking the victory in this fight. Or Hunter can land one of those bombs. We find out he's for real, and then we don't know because the cruiserweight division is actually very deep as well. More so with fighters not in the United States, but it's still very quality fighters in that division. So, like similar to Gavazdik, the winner of this fight, which is... We're leaning towards Usyk. Mm -hmm. Should be lining up for a eliminator fight or a title fight after this one. Yeah, what I what I've noticed in with Usyk, he was in versus his last fight, a shorter guy. He was actually counterpunched quite a few times in that. I'm, he never seemed to be in trouble, but you could tell that Mashunu, a guy who is much shorter, I want to say he was shorter by maybe six inches. He's about five ten. I yeah, think. about five it's about five five or six inches at the most. Um, he was able to counter him from that uh, that southpaw stance. Granted, Turner uh, Hunter is not a, uh, a southpaw. southpaw, but he is. He does have some quickness. He does have some speed. Doesn't have the greatest footwork, and he can throw himself off balance. But the thing about it is, he throws with malicious intent with every punch. Um, he's going to try to take Usyk's head off. What I would suggest for Usyk is to stay calm under fire and just throw him in between those punches and work that jab. Hopefully he doesn't, you know, get too out of himself or, um, you know, he remains focused. Because I think this is one of those fights that can kind of surprise him if he does not remain focused. The talent level is, is, is much greater, but the guy is, much, is actually fairly active as well. Yeah. Going back to where you were talking about during the Mashunu fight, what I liked about that was he was able to make the adjustments to Mashunu's countering style, take over that fight, and secure the stoppage. So, while it was taken advantage of early, he was able to take that avenue away and excel, hit the gas, get the finish. So, we'll see what happens in this one. And... I'm excited to see who goes where after this. Maybe if Hunter pulls the big upset, do they do a rematch? Do does he go on to do the eliminators? Or, you know, cause sometimes guys upset the apple cart and they're never heard from again. That's right. So we'll see. 
but we're leaning towards Usyk getting the job done. Main event. Now, we all know about the technical marvel that is Vasil Lomachenko. And most, if not all, people are looking at this as a, a showcase title fight. They're not giving Sosa much of a chance. And from what you've seen of Lomachenko, it's rightfully so. The dude is special. He's got incredible balance. His footwork and movement is very fluid. His punch selection, power, everything about this guy mm -hmm. is impressive. So, what can Tulsa do to win this fight? He has a blueprint in what happened in the Lomachenko Salido fight. And he's very similar to Salido. I think he's a little bit more technically sound than Salido. Mm -hmm. Even though he does have a decent amount of knockouts, I don't think he has the same power either. Uh, but he does like to get inside just like Salido. But he likes to work angles. Salido is going to throw looping wide punches and be right in front of you all night, charging forward and roughing you up. Sosa, on the other hand, he likes to fake, level change, get inside, cut an angle, and then rip a hook, which would look something like this. If Lomachenko's in his fighting stance, um, I'm, I switched him southpaw because Lomachenko fights southpaw. What Sosa does is he likes to get his hands high, he'll duck down, maybe touch the body, touch up top, but he'll step in, step over, throw a hook. It works great against the lower level guys. Uh, he knocked out um, Javier Fortuna. I he knocked know. out Javier Fortuna, but I'm thinking he knocked him out in the first round. It's uh, It was another contender. It was a good fight. I can't think of his I name I think right I know what you're talking about. We'll put it. Right yeah, here. I'll put it down right there. It was a beautiful knock. It was Jerry Belmontes. Okay, That's who yeah. it was. Um, who we saw giving Omar Figueroa all he could handle for two fights. Mm -hmm. And Sosa got him out of there in one round. It was beautiful work. But uh, also against um, his last fight against Steven Smith, he was doing similar things to him as well. He won a decision against him, but he likes to step off. He doesn't go to the right that much. It's usually, I mean, to his left that much. It's always to his right. Mm -hmm. And he... For some reason, the guys aren't ready for it. He lands it with a great amount of frequency. Can he land that on Lomachenko? Probably once or twice before he adjusts. The thing is, I don't know what Sosa is going to do once Lomachenko adjusts. Once he begins to cut his own angles and take away the angle of Sosa, he's probably just going to reset and then become picked apart. Or does he find a new angle to throw and or just take the whole Salido blueprint and try to bully him because this is only Lomachenko's, what, second fight at this weight class? No, third. He fought uh, Rocky Martinez. And then Walters. And then Nicholas Walters, now Sosa. So that is their common opponent, uh, Nicholas Walters. Sosa fought him to a draw. Lomachenko beat him into submission. Granted, there was a Walters that hadn't fought in over a year. Not Lomachenko's problem. Mm -hmm. So, there's not a lot to take from that as far as common opponent and how they did against each other. Because uh, Sosa fought a fresh Walters coming off the Donaire win. And... No, that was, no, that was Mariaga. Awful. Yeah, Mariaga, I'm sorry. But, um... A lot of people thought that that draw was not the correct score. I actually watched it again. Mm -hmm. It was, I gave the fight to Walters, but Sosa did a lot of things in that fight very well. And it's a few things that he did. Um, he was able to, of course, work on the inside, but he also stayed active. 
Yes. There were some there were some rounds. He threw 70, 80, 90 punches. And I'm not saying Lomachenko can't do that, but we know a lot of fighters like to keep around 50 or 60. But when you're throwing high volume and you're there to fight, that could be a mental stress on whoever you're fighting. I'm not and I'm not saying he experienced that versus Salito, uh -huh. but I'm pretty sure it weighed on him, which is why Salito might. Uh, part of the reason that Salito got the win is like, what do I have to hit this dude with to get him out of here? Yeah. And if Sosa, he's actually fairly big. He's short, but he's got like stock. He was a high school running back who could have went college, even at 130 pounds. So yeah. for someone that's probably that strong and that active, it places pressure on like, all right, I got to get him out of here. Got to get him out of here. Got to get him out of here. The other thing that I'm worried about with Sosa is that when he has that high guard, it's not, it's not here. It's here. And he leans over. Yeah. For a guy like Lomachenko, who probably is the top three in placing his punches on anywhere on your body in boxing right now, he's just going to eat that up. And that's what Walters did a lot of the fight. He went to the body quite a bit and ripped him. Yeah. So it depends on what the judges like. As you've seen with uh, our two last high-profile fights that were on pay-per-view with Golovkin Jacobs and mm -hmm. Kovalev Ward, um... One set of judges liked body punching. One set of judges did not. So if the fight goes the distance, those preferences will come into play. Now, Sosa's been stopped once very early in his career. That's right. Against someone who was nowhere near the technical prowess or skill level of Lomachenko, but neither was Sosa. Sosa is nowhere near as good as he is now. Sosa is a very good fighter. Oh, yeah. He stayed active, and he's got some good wins against Jerry Belmontes. He had to draw Walters. He actually that year that he fought Walters, he that was his sixth fight of the year, so he was active. Right. And then he went on to knock out Javier Fortuna and Stephen Smith, and one guy had two losses, the other one was undefeated. Yeah. So, like we said, this guy's no slouch, but Lomachenko's on another level. It, this guy is special. So we're expecting. Maybe a slow start while he, you know, because like we said, Sosa is good and he can set some traps and he can do a few things very well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about two to three rounds before Lomachenko figures him out, starts to get his range where he wants to be, where he wants to land those body shots, starts turning him. It starts to get ugly. And maybe about eight to ten rounds, we're all going to bed. Yeah. So... That's my pick. I'm thinking Lomachenko stops him between 8 and 10. Uh, maybe sooner the way he's hitting that 130. That's right. Uh, but I'm I'm thinking it's between 8 and 10. What you got? Um, it's going to be a late late half, maybe. I would say it's early as 7. Um, but the guy, Sosa, is pretty tough. Um, we just have to see what he could take and if he can push Lomachenko. I think it's a late stop. Like I said, 8 to 10 sounds about right. Yeah. So, now the fun part is seeing it actually play out in the ring and learning from what we see and bringing you the recap. So, that's it for this one, guys. Make sure you like this video. Leave your thoughts down below. Who wins, how, what style, you know, what tactics they employ. We'd love to talk with you guys, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can catch the recap and uh, other coverage of other fights. Hit the bell icon so you get those notifications for any new videos that we put out. Yes. Follow us on all the social networks. Um, all the links are down below. And like I said, we'll see you in the recap. Till then, fight on. This is round one and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's the game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black street fighter. Street fighter. Street fighter.